Today I'd like to show you how I do a simple makeup but also adding a soft baby wing. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you my skin. It isn't perfect. I do have forehead wrinkles, I've got sunspots, age spots, freckles, bit of rosacea still, this little scar that, because I picked a sore, hopefully that goes, and I'm not sure what that is, but that has popped up. So I do need to have my skin checked. However, I do try and look after my skin now as much as I can. This is the Airy Day sunscreen, and it is called the Mineral Mousse. So it goes on, you can see it's, it has a slight tint, but it goes on and it doesn't leave any sticky residue or look shiny. I absolutely love it and I've really just added this to my skincare routine and ensuring that I make sure I go down my neck and also my decolletage. Um, I did spend quite a few years in my youth as a scuba diving instructor over in Egypt, diving the Red Sea. So some of the skin damage I have on my skin can be from that time. Um, however, in the past seven years, I have looked after my skin. I did moisturize beforehand um, with this is the Youngblood Hydrolux. Now I'm going to use the primer. It's a mineral primer, just putting that on with my fingers. And I actually like to press that into my skin. This way it just really pushes into the skin and sits on the top, doesn't drink all the way in. Um, and I bring that down along my neck as well. The foundation that I'm going to use is the Golden Tan. You've probably seen me use this before. I like to dot it through the center of my face, not so close under my eyes because I will do a little bit more later um, when I'm cleaning up underneath from the eyeshadow. And then I just buff that into my skin. This is one of the Morph brushes. This is the R from the Ariel collection they are absolutely beautiful and probably some of the most high-end brushes and definitely I do find they are worth it they are beautiful I will add um, the name in the description for you so I'm just buffing this into my skin and making sure I carry that down my neck trying to cover that blemish hopefully that goes away um, my fault for picking the sore I should have just left it alone as always so just buffing this in, like I said, as a child growing up, I did suffer with rosacea. My cheeks would flare up at any given moment and I looked like a beetroot. So I've managed to calm that down a bit over the years. Now this is the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. And I have realized the reason why it's spewing out like that is I haven't closed it off properly. Talk about a blonde moment. Anyway, the payoff with this bronzer is very strong. Hence, just the small dots. And you'll see when I start to blend it in that it can get a little scary. So don't stress. Just um, trust the process and start blending. And it'll just disappear effortlessly into your skin. I always like to frame my face um, through my contour. Literally just helps to warm up the foundation. I love the fact that it is a creamy product. Creamy products are quite good to start off with before I need to set everything. So just framing the face up on my forehead and the sides of my temples there. And then I do like to sort of bring out my jawbone there a little bit and chisel off the chin. Bringing the residual just down the neck there too. <clears throat> now this is a Charlotte Tilbury dupe. This is the Emco Beauty and it's the highlight and glow in peach. So that's really pretty. So I'm using it a little bit like a blush and a little bit like a highlighter. That's why I'm keeping it nice and high. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm blending that in with um, one of the Fernando Hervas brushes. This again comes in a set, set of 10. They are beautiful, very affordable as well. I have the link for these in my bio. Love a little bit of brush across the nose. It always creates a nice blush. Now, just combing my brows today. I'm just combing through my brows. So if anything that you do, or if you do anything, anything at all, it's comb your brows. Now, I'm using a very light shade to set the foundation. Now, you can see that it's sitting in the crease there. Just using my finger to pat that through. Now, you can use a setting powder, anything that's in a beige or a light color, and that is matte. This is from the MAC Semi Sweet 9 um, eyeshadow palette. And this palette's all in matte shades. And I like it because it is very, very light and it just will set 
that um, foundation. And also by doing this, it just means the next color that we apply will blend seamlessly. So what happens if you don't set it, you will find that the eyeshadow will grab. So it'll grab onto the foundation or onto your skin. So this helps to alleviate that. Now, this is a Youngblood bronzer or contour shade, actually. It's called Celeal. You can use any contour shade for this to carve out the shape of your eye socket there. Now, once again, just starting in the outer corner, the bulk of that product, and then blending it through. So just up onto that brow bone slightly and blending it, blending it towards the inner eye there. Just come a little bit closer. Perfect. So blending that through and same on the other side. So just put the bulk in the outer corner and then blend it through the crease up and out. And this way it just creates some shape for your eye and it's very, very simple. So this is all you need to do on your eyes, on the top of your eyelids actually. Blending it through. I'm using one of the Fernando Hervas um, eyeshadow brushes. This comes in a 10 pack. This one is the Real Techniques um, eyeshadow brush, something a little bit more detailed, and just running that same contour shade along the bottom lash line. I like doing this because it makes it all sort of cohesive and it makes my eyes look a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to use the same contour shade and contour my face. And up and around my temples, pretty much setting that creamy product that we put on before the Charlotte Tilbury there and just framing the face a little bit, giving me a little bit more definition and warmth as well. Now I'm cleaning up under the eyes. Now you can use concealer. I'm just using foundation. The reason I'm just using foundation is it is a day makeup. I don't want it to be too heavy. And I'm just dotting it underneath and just cleaning up underneath the eyes. And I will use my finger, use your ring finger here. It's just one of the softest pads to just even out that product and press it into the skin. And that'll just help clean it up. Straight away, I'm going in with the setting powder. This is the mineral rice powder. This is in medium. It's also by Youngblood. And I will use it to set any around my T-zone, really. Now, here we go with the, our baby wing. So this is the Youngblood Chestnut Eyeliner Pencil. It's a gorgeous, creamy chocolate color. Now, run it into your lash line and then open your eyes and then start by just pulling a little bit out. And you're going to use your finger and you're going to slide that out and smudge it. Then pulling your eye back a little bit. Not from the whole outer end, like a little bit in. And then bring it into your eye line. And that will create a very soft baby wing. And then I just finish the inner corner. And tap underneath. So I really join that underneath one to the top one. And then bring it along the bottom lash line. Same on the other side. So just really push that eyeliner pencil into your lash line, just so it doesn't take over your whole eyelid. And then opening your eyes, looking straight ahead, just peek it out slightly and then smudge it with your finger. And you'll find that this gives you just a really easy, soft wing. Now, if you'd like to add a bit more drama, you could, use, you could do this in black and you could also make it bigger and longer just by using the same technique. I quite like it like this. It's kind of barely there, but it does help to elongate the eyes. And I always like putting that little bit just underneath. Also helps to make the eyes look a little bit bigger as well and finishes them off. I'm just going in again to show you that's the wing. You keep repeating these steps until you get the desired shape. I'm going in with the mineral mascara. This one's from Youngblood. It is one of my favorite mascaras because I find it helps to separate the lashes because it's mineral. It's also good for my lashes. And I find when I do need to take it off, I don't need to scrub too hard. So I'm not actually hurting my eyes in the process. Now I'm just going to add a bit more of that contour shade just in the outer corner there, just to follow that line of the um, wing and bring it out slightly. Same on the other side. Just helps to create a little bit more shape and then really follow that wing out a little bit. Now it's not often that I pay much attention to my lips, but if I do, this is one of my little tricks. 
So I'm using the Youngblood Pout Lip Liner, which is a very nude lip liner. And I'm just overlining the Cupid's bow. Ever so slightly, I'm just going on the other side of my Cupid's bow, right in the middle. And same as at down, excuse me, same as the bottom lip, just underneath. But then I'm sticking to my own lip line as I bring it in. So I'm only overlining the middle of the top and the middle of the bottom. And this will create a really nice pout. And then I'm going to color it in with the lip liner. This helps it stay longer. And then add a little bit of gloss to bring it all together. Now we're heading in with this lovely peachy shade from the Weekender palette. This is one of my favorite palettes from Youngblood. And we're just dusting over where we have that nice highlight there and just really bringing those cheeks out a little bit more. My last trick is to pop the same blush up into the eye socket. It just softens the look and makes you look like you're a blending pro. And there's my look.